more being the church, less time playing it, less saying we love, more try relaying it, less being above, more humble. So we um, let me be more centered. So the first question is, how do you feel your Black identity and Christianity intersect, and has there ever been an issue when they do? That's a really, um, that's, I, I would say that's a really big question, right? Um, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it, it doesn't intersect as much as some people would like it to. For you personally, or are you speaking like generally? I'm speaking for myself personally, right? In reality, you know, when you know your history, of course it intersects, right? Because of uh, just the simple fact that, you know, we were taken from Africa as slaves and we were taught new religions, right? Of which, you know, came Christianity, Right. And, you know, what, what my, what was, whatever was the religion that my ancestors had, I have no idea what it is, but to be honest, I don't really care what it was. Right. Because I firmly believe the God who I serve in. Right. So in those ways, of course it intersects. And um, I would say that it doesn't intersect as much as people would like, because there's, um, there's many people who, uh, you know, till this day, try to emphasize, uh, you know, the Afrocentricity in Christianity, right? And I can understand why to a degree, because for a large part, um, the Black story in history has been purposely written out of history, right? Um, the accomplishments, the successes, you know, are written out of history, right? We um, were brought to this part of the world originally as slaves, not just the Americans, but I'm of Caribbean descent, right? If, if you're somebody who has parents that are from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. then that is also your story, right? Black people made it to this part, made it to, these, to this continent, right? Through slavery, right? Whether that be, if you're talking about North America, South America, the Caribbean, we were enslaved. Right, we were seen as as slaves by the the colonizers, you know, as a way to have free labor to do their work. Right, so um, hold on, I, I kind of forgot where my train of thought was 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 going. I'm gonna ask you the question again. Uh, hold on, what what was it I was I was trying to say when I was saying this? Yeah, so. When we were when we were brought here, it was with the intention of 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 serving as as slaves. And you were asking, how does it intersect? And I think that because of that, there's a lot of oh yes, and I was talking about how we were purposely written out of history, and so even in the images, in the Christian images that we grew up seeing, right? We grew up seeing images of everything that has to do with God was white, right? Now, mind you, I never noticed. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm going to be honest, as a child, I never noticed, mm -hmm. right? As a child... You know, I wasn't like Muhammad Ali. I didn't say, where are the black angels, right? Or why are none of the characters in these storybooks black, right? right? Why is everybody white? Mm -hmm. I never noticed, nor was it ever pointed out to me as being a thing, right? 
the most, once I became cognizant kind of of it, I just had an understanding that all of these were just depictions in people's minds Mm -hmm. of characters for which, you know, they had no reference point of what they actually look like. And I understand that, you know, obviously we have Bible verses that clearly describe the appearance of Jesus. Not being white. Um, But even those verses that talk about it have a lot of symbolism in the midst of them, right? Because it will talk about how Jesus had the appearance of burnt bronze and that his hair was like white wool, Mm -hmm. but also that he has eyes of fire and that he has seven stars in his right hand Mm -hmm. that he has a tongue of a double-edged sword Mm -hmm. and so i think that when to simplify that as just being oh jesus is black Mm -hmm. is doing just is doing it in and in and of itself is also doing a different type of damage because you're missing the whole point like that's not that's not all that that text was talking about that's not like obviously there are components there that are meant to be looked into that are meant to be examined right the 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 examples of 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 black people that we have in the bible we know that moses's wife was black mm-hmm. right moses was in an interracial relationship and his sister and his brother did not like it right? We know that um, Solomon's first wife, um, the the Shunammite woman, was black, Mm -hmm. right? In Songs of Solomon chapter one, she says, don't hate me um, because I've been kissed by the sun and because my my skin is dark, something along those lines, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, We know the Bible says that David had ruddy skin. His skin was red, right? So we can assume like a red undertone, you know, maybe David was my complexion, Mm -hmm. right? But for me, you know, the people in the Bible were Middle Eastern, Mm -hmm. right? Whatever that mixture is between black and Hebrew. And I don't really like, to me, that's not, that's not the important thing. I think the important thing is that when we, when we make, I think this is part of the part of the difficulty with drawing to begin with, right? Okay. Because now when you start drawing what Jesus looks like, mm-hmm. right, you're 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 making interpretations that are coming purely from yeah. your imagination mm-hmm. as opposed to from the scripture. And then it creates problems, right? And it's not, I'm not going to go as far as saying any picture of God is a graven image, Mm -hmm. right? That the Bible talks about in Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy 5, that you shall not make any graven image of any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above, that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water beneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. Right. And we know that, you know, these original depictions of Jesus, as far as I know, were for idolatry. I think the point, though, is that, like, it's good to know that Jesus, (laughs) I don't want to sound bad when I say this, but it's good to know that Jesus isn't white. And the fact that he's been depicted as white to all of us, because that has been intentional by colonizers and that has been intentional by white supremacy so although his skin color in essence does not matter in terms of his character or his just you know just who he is it does make a difference especially for black christians to understand that there's a reason why um they've been painted this white jesus and not just his skin color but by changing his skin color they've also changed the character of Christ as well. And like, and how to... How? 
So, okay. So for instance, some white Christians also, I'm not going to just ex, um, say exclusive to them, but some Christians believe that like, everything that's going on in the world right now with the Black Lives Matter movement, they believe that they just want to keep their hands off. They don't want to be too divisive. They don't want anything to do with um, confrontation. Um, And so I would say that that is a part of the white Jesus image, because when I look in the Bible, you know, God is all about justice. Mm -hmm. like justified but he's all about justice and not keeping silent when you see like your brothers and sisters um are beaten murdered and raped and killed and like you know all of this stuff so that's what i mean do you you know what i mean i hear what you're saying i hear what you're saying but again for me the for instance right Mm -hmm. when glory comes Mm-hmm. on that day that the trumpet sounds mm-hmm. that the clouds roll back as a scroll I honestly on that day if Jesus is white like white 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 I could care less of because course. I'm seeing Jesus of course okay if he's if he's dark skinned black, I could care less. If he looks Mexican, okay, if he looks Native American, okay, if he looks Asian, mm-hmm. I really that's that's the last thing that's on my mind. And I have to deal with a lot of, you know, individuals that um they're being drawn into the whole black Israelite movement and the focus is just wrong, right? The focus is not the gospel, mm-hmm. right? Because when you're ultimately any doctrine should be leading you to the cross, right? Um, I'm not saying that you can't find doctrine that would lead you to the cross that has to do with race, mm-hmm. but oftentimes, most of the times that I've heard, it's fallen short of that, mm-hmm. right? And it's been used to preach a different gospel, mm-hmm. which gives a superiority to Black people. Mm-hmm. And that also is not the gospel. I hear you. I because. Hear you. Our job Uh is not to reverse what white people have done in the past through their colonizing, through their oppression, right? Our job is to preach the kingdom of God and his, and his soon coming, right? And if this is the if this is a device that is against the kingdom mm-hmm. then it should be made known but it should not be our focus do you see I, what i'm saying again i hear you not that i disagree but i just like for a lot of people Cause at the end of the day, right? Like realistically, like I do look forward to, you know, when Jesus bursts through the clouds and you hear the trumpet and you're like, yeah, you know, I look forward to that. Um, and his skin color will not matter, but I'm just saying, and I'm not trying to reverse what colonizers and the systems that white supremacy has created. I don't, that's, mm-mm, that's not on me. Um, that's what God is for. <clears throat> but also as a Christian, um, and especially as a black woman, something that I cannot, believe in or I can't take on or take off or whatever like I will no matter what my spirituality is I will always be black and so I feel like a lot of Christians what they do is that they um or even spiritual people in general like I feel like what we do is that we we think because we, we have become a new creature And it's like, we get like a new, like translucent skin color that comes with it. So like all the issues, um, 
everything that comes that's associated with being a black woman, it's no longer there because I'm a Christian and I don't have to deal with these things. And that could be like said for any other sin because this is a sin and we would have to address it. And especially if we care about our white brothers and sisters and our, uh, our black brothers and sisters who are so far removed from their blackness. Um, and, and, and so what I mean by that, I mean like they're so far removed that they sound ignorant and then, and then they hurt other people in the process because not all of us have dealt with police brutality. Not all of us, maybe a lot of us aren't even aware of maybe some of the racist things that we have we have encountered or whatever the case may be, or maybe you just never experienced racism on a whole. I That's kind of doubtful for me, but let's just say, um, as Christians, we should be able to hear the concerns which is so interesting to me because especially as black Christians, like this is not like some thing to help other people. Like this is affecting us too. Like we could be Breonna Taylor. We could be George Floyd. You know what I mean? And in that instance, our Christianity doesn't matter um, to that other person. To God, of course, like his will, let it be done and stuff. But this is not what he wanted. And I understand looking to glory and stuff, but I also, it just doesn't sit well with me. Like the, um, I just, for me personally, I see it intersecting a lot, you know, my blackness and my Christianity, not um, in terms of how I view God, but I think because um, of the struggles that I face as a black woman, it made me lean on God a little bit more because I'm just like, I really can't change people personally, but I do know like, God has the power to do that. And if not, I, 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 I find comfort in knowing that they will, justice will be found, whether by our, the system, whether by the justice system, the justice system, or by, you know, what happens behind the veil spiritually. So I do find comfort in that, but you see what I mean? Yeah, I would say um, one of the first rules to war <clears throat> is identifying the enemy, mm -hmm. right? Identifying the enemy. And although that sounds like it's very simple, mm -hmm. it's not as simple as it appears, especially when you're being deceived to believe that your enemy is who it is not. Mm. Tell me more. Because, because what happens is we are at a war. And it's clear that we're at war with ideas, with structures, with systems. But what happens is if we all take our anger and fight, but we're not united in fighting the same enemy, then we lose our strength and we lose the war. Understood. Jesus says that a house... A house that is divided against itself cannot stand. Mm -hmm. He says Satan doesn't cast out Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan, who's fighting a losing fight, is smart enough to know not to fight against the other demons because they're on his side. But what he convinces us is that our fellow humans are not on our side. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we fight each other. Mm -hmm. We make war with each other, which prevents us from making war with the enemy. So how does that look? How that looks is... If you read the story of the Tower of Babel, right? Um, is it okay for me to reference it? Is it okay? 
I don't know if that's the type of, you know, Fine. <laughs> if that's like a part of the, I'm going to wrap this, um, this question up soon though, but yeah, this is fine. Okay. Uh, boom. Where is it now? Yeah. So if it says, <clears throat> so when the tower of Babel happened and the people are like, you know, trying to build a tower up to heaven. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 11, verse six, and the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. So he's look, finally, the people are one. They have one language, but this is what they decide to do with it. Right. And then he says, now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them mm -hmm. because we were made in God's image. And this is so, this is so deep. This is so important because we were made in God's image. The Bible is literally saying that once we are one, God has empowered us to be able to accomplish anything we purpose to do. It's so interesting, and I heard Ivor Myers refer to this. It's so interesting that the sign that God gives Noah for his glory is the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Which shows that the glory of God is in the rainbow. The glory of God is not just in the red. It's <laughs> not just in the... <laughs> it's not just... The glory of God is actually in all of them coming together. Mm -hmm. And what separated us was not the color of our skin. It was our ability to communicate with each other. Yeah. That's what separated us was our ability to sit down at the table and to talk. And the crazy thing is that God had to do it. And it's like, wouldn't that have been something that the devil would have, been, would have done? <laughs> but the problem was that we were united under Satan. We weren't united under God. Mm -hmm. We were united to eventually go to hell. Mm -hmm. Not united to eventually go to heaven. Right? And ever since the Garden of Eden... We've been convinced that our flesh is our enemy. It's so interesting that the first thing Adam and Eve do after they sin is not try to step on the serpent. The first thing that they do is they cover up their flesh because they perceive what God called good to be evil. God looked at them in their nakedness mm -hmm. and called it good. Mm -hmm. But having the ability to perceive good and evil doesn't mean having the, the ability to know what is good and evil. Mm -hmm. Having the facility and the capability and the capacity of mind to fathom that this is good and that that is evil doesn't mean that I am going to choose correctly. This is why the word of God came so that we could know the difference between what was good and what was evil. The first thing that we called evil was something that God called good, which was ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's why God says to Adam, who told you that you were naked? Mm -hmm. Who deceived you against your own flesh? And this problem that we had in the Garden of Eden is a problem that we have today. We are looking at our own flesh and blood. We have one race. Yeah. And we have one fight. So, yes. <laughs> Hold on. Just let, just let me wrap. Just let me put a bow. Let me put a bow on it. Sure. <laughs> If you read the book, The Power of Habit. I'm actually reading Atomic Habits right now. Oh, dope. 
Dope, 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 dope. I don't know that book, but that sounds like a dope book. But the book, The Power of Habit, teaches something interesting. That if you focus on one thing, that one thing can change everything that you do. Mm -hmm. It's not that race is not important to be addressed. Mm -hmm. It's that race will be addressed when love is addressed. Yeah. And it's, it's literally that simple. But it's not that race should not be addressed. Mm -hmm. It's not that race is not important. It's not that race isn't a problem in the church. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not even that race isn't a problem in the home. The problem is I would rather look at the cold instead of the cough. Mm -hmm. what we do is we try to tackle symptoms but we don't get to the core which is the reason why frankly speaking until jesus comes racism will always exist we'll never be perfect yeah but we'll have a better chance fighting racism with love mm -hmm. because that's the core of the actual issue then we'll have just talking about race in and of itself. Mm -hmm. When the topic of race comes out of the focus on love, now we're moving in a direction that is actually solving the core of the issue, mm -hmm. right? But just forcing people to regurgitate something because, of, because this is what the crowd wants. No, that's not. That's doesn't solve anything. And I'm not saying that's what you're saying. Yeah. It's but I'm saying this is what I'm seeing. Yeah. Okay. Right? There's a bunch of people who are now they're saying Black Lives Matter, but you're not doing anything. You haven't changed anything. Nothing has. I would rather you not say anything. I would rather you not open your mouth to even say Black Lives Matter, but you change the way that you treat people. You change the way that you hire people. You change the way that you examine people. You change the way that you defend people. You change the way that you stand up for people. I would rather you do that. But it'd be perfect to have both. <laughs> but if I had to choose, yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying that we shouldn't still speak. But I'm saying I would much rather the person who acts than the person who speaks. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I had two questions. I'm I'm going to try to remember them. Um, so. I'm going to comment on what you just said, then I'm going to ask my follow-up question, and then we can go into your, your personal testimony. But <clears throat> so, um, again, I agree. It's not that I don't disagree with you. <laughs> you said you don't disagree. You mean it's not that you don't agree. Is that what I meant? Yeah. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I agree. <clears throat> I agree with you. Um, I'm just saying that, like, from what you said, what I'm hearing is, like, there's more, um, I guess this kind of <laughs> goes back to a conversation that we had last night, but I feel like, at the end of the day, we're all responsible, right, for our, our own actions and how we treat people, and God judges us accordingly to that, regardless of the opposition, and no matter what it is we face, period. Um, however, I just... I just, it, it, it's unsettling for me because when I hear that, I hear like, focus on you, don't say anything about the, yeah, that's just how I'm interpreting it. But what I'm hearing is like, focus on you, focus on your relationship with God, focus on you, um, you know, your own self and how you treat other people. Um, don't speak too loudly about the fact that, you know, white people, white supremacy, has um used christianity to colonize us and so and also too like the church was one of the first institutions um in america that was segregated 
that's what sparked my, um, I always want to say Malcolm X, but Martin Luther King's, um, his ministry, his, his protest, you know what I mean? He wanted to address that. And I just like, I hear it, but I'm also, <clears throat> but I'm also kind of like, what about, what are we saying to racist Christians? That's, it's not even a thing, but just to put a label on it. Like, what do you do to people like that? What do you say? Um, yeah. You keep quiet and then you just put it on yourself because that creates more division, to be honest. Yeah, you see, I think what happens is people's image of God determines how they live out their Christianity, yeah. right? When you realize that Jesus was a revolutionary, right? Jesus wasn't somebody who was just trying to keep silent on issues, right? Jesus was such a revolutionary that as with most revolutionaries, he had to be killed. Yeah. Yeah. As with most revolutionaries, he had to be killed. Mm -hmm. This focusing on love does not mean that you're silent. Focusing on love means that you know what you're marching about means that you know the reason why you're saying what you're saying, mm -hmm. right? Two people can be doing the same thing and doing it for different reasons and so expecting different results, mm -hmm. right? For me, I believe in Black Lives Matter. I speak up for, for Black people. Really? I try to educate myself on social justice issues Right. I try to educate uh, young men and women as um, to understand that their that their blackness is nothing to be ashamed of. Right. That it's that it's something to to celebrate yeah. and to be proud of because they were created in God's image the same way as everybody else was created in God's image. Yeah. Right. Because saying black lives matter is not belittling any other race mm -hmm. right and that's why to be honest when i hear people saying stuff like black lives matter equally or black lives matter too black lives matter as well like what are you talking about yeah oh you're you're telling me it's controversial to say that black lives matter mm -hmm. it's, it's not even saying black lives are important It's just saying that they matter. Yeah. Right? That, and th that is offensive? That is me saying that black lives matter is offensive? Mm -hmm. I will not say black lives matter equally we already know that mm -hmm. but the same people and this is this is the problem because of this hate thing mm -hmm. the issue is there's always going to be an issue it doesn't matter so long as you're standing up for black rights there's an issue mm -hmm. that's really what it is it doesn't matter if there's no name on it. People are just going to be bothered that you're kneeling instead of standing because they don't see that what's happening to you is a problem. Yeah, because they have preconceived notions of who we are. They see us as, um, as less than second-class citizens. They see us as... Um, animalistic they just see us as other subpar from human that's really what the core of it is so and we've been educated this way mm -hmm. not just white people yes black people yeah. we've been educated to think we're less than yeah it's in all of our institutions it's in all of our institutions it's in the movies that we watch it's in the news that we watch. It's in the TV shows that we watch. We've been perpetuated an image of a black person being a criminal. I remember, I'll never forget. Um, 
and I know you want to move on from here. I'll never forget. Uh, in high school, there was a girl I knew who really liked black guys, right? What was she? She's, she's a white girl. Okay. Right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay? <laughs> depends so, on the part. We're talking about hate and love, right? So it depends so, on the <laughs> So I remember I asked her. I was like, why do you like black guys so much? Like, why? I can't remember if I asked her, why do you think? Like like a group of you, or if I just ask just her, right? But I remember she said something that bothered me. It was like she thought she was complimenting me. Mm-hmm. But I was like, what? I actually talked about this at the barbershop yesterday. Okay. <laughs> just to show you how much I do actually talk about race, yeah. believe it or not. Right? I believe you. <laughs> so she said... The reason why she's attracted to black guys is because from black guys just being black, they already have the bad boy image. We knew this. I don't know if you knew this from before she said that, but we knew this. Black women, we knew this. But continue, please. Humor me. (laughs) I was like, what? What? What is that supposed to mean? So you look at me as being a bad guy, as being dangerous because I'm black, but you find that dangerousness to be sexy and I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to find that flattering. I'm supposed to I'm supposed to take that as a compliment that because you feel a little bit of danger around me because I'm black but I'm not dangerous. Do you see what I'm saying? That always that always that always that always bothered me because I think and what I was talking about with my boys yesterday is some people are racist but because they're not extreme racist, I believe that there's different levels of racism, right? Mm. Honestly, I believe there's different levels because I've experienced racism personally. I've experienced the most overt, right? I've experienced violence, physical violence mm. from racism more than once, mm-hmm. right? I've had rocks stone thrown at me on two separate occasions in my life while being called the n-word wow okay in two completely different places okay so i've experienced violent racism i've experienced subtle racism and i've experienced ignorant racism gotcha right what i've seen is there are people who truly believe that their race is superior to other races. Mm -hmm. And once you believe that your race is superior, then intrinsically you believe that other races are inferior. And the instant that you believe other races are inferior, you are a racist. Plain, and simple, but that might not mean that you're rude, right? That might not mean that you can't have a black person at your house. That might just mean that you can't have a black person marry your daughter, right? That you can't have a black person marry your son, right? That you can't give your business to a black person or have a boss that's a black person because they're inferior to you but you can live with them you can socialize with them you can be friends with them the same way that you could be friends with a dog you can love a dog right but i'm not gonna let the dog drink out my glass but i love my dog you see what i'm saying i'm not gonna let the dog eat out my plate but that's the way that some that's the type of racism that some people have which would be still segregation Exactly. Some people have a racism that's a violent racism. So it goes beyond that. It's not even just, okay, I believe that you're inferior to me. So there's some things that I don't believe that you can do. It's, 
I literally hate you. Yeah. I hate you. Right? I want you to die. I don't want you on earth. I remember when Aries used to be out and you used to be able to download music on the, on the computer. Aries, what is that? It's some that it's like a program that you would use. It's like LimeWire and stuff like that. Back in the day, we used to download music. Y'all, y'all kids, y'all know nothing about this stuff. Okay. This is grown people talk. <laughs> so we used to download music, right? We, before Spotify and all that. And when you're on the, the, um, the software to download the music, there was chat rooms that you could go into, mm-hmm. right? And I saw a chat room that was a white supremacist chat room, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, back then people used to actually go on chat rooms in the internet where you just like go with a bunch of random people and just type, yeah, yeah. right? So I went in and, you know, my name was like Loon Money, you know? <laughs> It was like clearly a black account. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just clearly, like young, greasy, you know, whatever. <laughs> type, type of, whatever, right? Yeah. So um, somebody on the thing was like, one of them has entered. Oh my, oh my gosh. And then their leader was like, let it speak. Let's hear what it has to say. And Denisha... I literally poured my heart out on that king on that keyboard. I gave like the greatest MLK (laughs) essay you could have ever imagined. Like I was telling them, like if I had a different name, if I came on with a different username, you guys could have ended up loving me because you guys have no idea who I am as a person. My skin doesn't ever anyways, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll never forget what the guy said to me. He said, um, and <clears throat> for sake of, 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 the, uh, of just clarity, you, you've heard of the term a piglet? Mm-hmm. Okay. So he called me a piglet, but repl- replaced the P with an N. Yeah. Right? And he said, oh... <laughs> Piglet, right? Mm-hmm. He said, what you fail to understand is you're right. If you would have came in with a different username, we could have been best friends. He says, but I don't hate you because I think you're a bad person. I don't hate you because I'm making any assumptions about your character. I hate you because you're black. Then he said, ban it. And they kicked me out of the group. Yeah. And that's when I saw a certain level of racism that I didn't even think existed at that time, which was just, you see, I thought that people were led to be racist because of beliefs that they had inside of them. And some people, that's what it is, right? But for this individual, it was just a vitriol and a hatred against my skin right and i would say probably the lowest most passive form of people don't realize that they're racist is when they believe stereotypes Mm -hmm. right and then whenever you don't fit a stereotype you're an exception Mm -hmm. right that black people are loud right that we all like the cartoon show that we all you know love chicken and watermelon Do you see what I'm saying? That black people are, um, you know, more like this and more like when you, once you start adhering to stereotypes in your mind and believing them to be true, that's also a form of racism. Mm -hmm. Right. But anyways. Yeah. There are, um, I guess there are levels like to define um, who's a threat, like who will be willing to like literally take you out. But for me, like it, wherever you are on the scale, you're still a threat to me and my homegirls because, um, do you know Hazel? Do you see that? No? Okay, it's fine. <laughs> 
there's a video of this girl and she she was outside of um, a club called Bella Noches and like anyway she was just like it's just upsetting me and my homegirl because um yeah someone shot up the club or whatever she's like like oh, Who Lord. That? like anyways so there's just re- referencing that video but it just um it's upsetting to me either way because you're still a threat to me regardless you're either a threat to my physical body like you're willing to take my breath away or um in the in the literal sense or even in the spiritual emotional mental whatever you're still taking that oxygen away from my identity away from my soul and so you're still a threat to me um you're still a threat i don't care wherever you are on that spectrum um i can't have you but some people on the spectrum can be educated most definitely right but people who just hate because of your skin Mm -hmm. like to me the only thing that can happen is for you to die and be born again (laughs) like the only thing that can save that is for you to find christ Mm -hmm. right i am not going to convince you differently if you just hate me because of my skin, the only thing, the only person who can convince you differently of that is Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. right? Somebody who truly believes that their race is superior, that we're inferior. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I feel it's just only Christ can reveal to you the truth about that. Well, you we- see what I'm saying? Only Christ, right? right? Awesome. Somebody who adheres to stereotypes. And they think stereotypes to be true. I don't know one person who hasn't believed at least one stereotype to be true at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. Right? To me, that's ignorance. Mm -hmm. That can more easily be educated. Mm -hmm. But believe me, there's a lot of people who went to the Black Lives Matter marches that their minds are full of stereotypes yeah. and they don't even realize yeah. that they themselves. Yeah, I agree. Are, right. But that's where education can come in. That's where we can sit. We can have a conversation. But if you think that you're superior to me off jump, it's hard for us to have a conversation. It's hard. It doesn't mean that I won't converse with you because really I don't have any problem to, with you. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, to me, you're not my enemy. The one who's making you his puppet is my enemy. But these ad- these issues I will address so that at least you can see the weapons that are being formed against you. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. no weapon formed against me shall prosper. shall prosper. But this is a weapon that's been... And that's the thing. People think that the weapons that they're killing us with are actually the weapons that they are killing themselves with. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) Yeah. And that is a weapon that's been formed against you in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And you know, I'm not yelling at you. You know, this is just, I get high. I know. I know. I know. It's the, it's the preacher in you. I know. (laughs) Um, yeah, so I'm just going to make this last point and then we can go, um, into your personal testimony, but I agree with you. Um, actually, no, I don't agree with you because I still feel as if I personally would not take it upon myself to talk to someone who just right off the bat believes that they are superior to me just because they're not black. Um, and that can go for people of color to white people. It don't matter. Um, However, um, I, f- I feel like that's where white people come in. That's when the true allyship comes in and you have to talk to those people. That's not my responsibility. Makes sense. So I feel as if they could, I think it's, it's really a deep spiritual thing to get to that level of um, just ignorance um, and stupidity because it really is as stupid as it sounds. <laughs> um, but I, I don't feel as if anybody is a lost cause and I just feel like with that mentality, um well some people are but just to treat everyone like they are just based off of some of their movements um i feel like that allows other people to be complacent but i'm just saying for me personally i'm not putting myself on the line to talk to somebody who has no problem lynching me um no thank you um but as for 
our white allies, sorry, I shouldn't do that, but I'm doing this actually. If you're a true ally, um, then you should speak up. Um, and, and yeah. All right, so this ends this portion. I Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching the very first episode of Her Journey to Zion's uh, new series, Black Eyes Christian Lens. So the introduction started very abrupt abruptly and so did the conclusion. Uh, the reason for that is that I was actually going to have the first question be a part of another series that I'm going to be dropping uh, this Friday, so tomorrow. Uh, but I realized that this question in itself is very loaded and deserves its own uh, space. So for anybody who wants to keep up with uh, Daniel, you guys can follow him um, on Instagram at innocent underscore D. And you can also uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel called Weekly Words of Worship, where every Wednesday he drops a video about um, just inspiration and, you know, keeping ourselves alive spiritually. So, yeah, hit him up. If you guys have anything that you would like to contribute to this conversation, please comment below. And of course, uh, subscribe to Her Journey to Zion's YouTube page. And also check us out on Instagram at Her Journey to Zion. And you can also check out uh, my personal blog, www.herjourneytozion.com, which also acts as a hub spot for just everything that we're up to. Have a great day. And again, thank you so much.